Okay, I think, there we go, I think that's working. Now, we didn't catch any of the introductions on the recording, but I'll just put the little vertical marker here. This is the first meeting of the Ross Web Tools Working Group, uh, and here we are. So I'll just share this screen here to bring up uh, the document. Anyone who doesn't have this notes link, it was in the invite, but I'll also paste it in the chat here. Um, I've been using a document just like this for the, the tooling working group. It's pretty simple, like some important links up top, uh, a template for the meetings, a list of uh, like to-dos that haven't been done yet, and then uh, just one by one, the meeting notes. Uh, I've found it fairly effective at capturing things without having a lot of friction. Um, maybe if uh, uh, someone else wants to toss some names in attendance, it's not really that important to capture, but it's kind of interesting over time to see uh, who shows up to meetings, and you can kind of get a feeling of like, oh, you know, last year we were getting 12 people on average. Um, that sort of thing. And sure. it, yeah, does well, yeah, if anyone knows how to configure Google Meets to just automatically let people in, let me know. Otherwise, I'll figure it out offline before the next meeting. Um, and then the first thing that I had up to talk about was I made a proposal for a charter for the working group. Uh, this is kind of part of the template uh, that Open Robotics has set up for. Uh, how working groups work. It's nice to have a, a governance model here. I had initially copied over the, uh, just forked the, the template repository, which uh, gives us an open template that uh, doesn't have any details filled in. And so I added a, a thing to fill in the details, and I would love some feedback on it. We don't necessarily have to merge it live. Uh, I made a couple of comments. Like The main purpose for me was getting familiar with everything that's in the organization on GitHub uh, and taking a look at you know what all the repositories are, whether we want to commit to maintaining everything, and having just an explicit accounting of everything that's in there. Um, so just wanted to call attention to that. Is, is all, and if anyone has any thoughts, let me know. Otherwise, we can uh, move on and potentially just review this uh, asynchronously. Um, thanks, Jihoon, for, for giving feedback on that already. So the next thing is I appreciate um, that you gave me the access to to fork that repository into into the organization. I know I'm not like a longtime contributor, so that was uh, <laughs> you didn't have to, but uh, it was helpful. Um, and I think something we will want to think about is is who who are the owner set of the the assets associated with the working group. And um, right now, like anybody who thinks they should be an owner, I also think you should be an owner, and we can make uh, potentially. Uh, like reviewer teams on the organization and add the auto auto assign rotation for for contributions, which I have found pretty useful. I'm not sure if that's already configured uh, anywhere. Oh. If it isn't, we can get it set up. Um, if anyone's interested in that, I've found that an auto assign rotation at the very least puts a little bit of pressure on a on a maintainer to to look at it. Otherwise, you get a lot of notifications on GitHub. I don't know about everyone else, but I sure get a lot. Um, so getting assigned to things is a, a good way to call my attention to them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so most of the discussions I've put here are uh, a fairly like bookkeeping. Um, once we've got through them, I would just want to open up the floor to like what everyone wants to talk about and where we think this should go. Um, so my question was like, do we want to have some sort of project management tool that aggregates the backlogs from the different things? Um, I, for example, have used Zen Hub a little bit. Um, but that's only if that provides value. I just want to throw it out there. So I was actually uh, confused by the backlog tool. It's what backlog you are talking about here? Um, I was thinking about like a, a centralized way to view issues across the various repositories. Because uh, mm -hmm. right now, if you look at a single repo, you can see the issues there. And that may be good enough for 
for what we need to do, in which case we don't need to think any further. Um, I just wanted to bring it up. I've used Zen Hub, which allows you to look at um, the combined backlogs across multiple repositories, which maybe helps you think about prioritizing things on a, a higher level. Um, and then you can maybe, I don't know, put a, a prioritized list of, of the roadmap for what, what should be built next and, and send that to the, prior, uh, the community to communicate the priority of tasks uh, according to this body of people who cares about where things go. Um, see. Yeah, it may be extra work. It may be not worth it. I just wanted to throw it out there so that we're thinking about that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to ask if anybody else is interested in sharing the, the load of running these meetings. Um, I definitely just wanted to get everyone in the room the first time. I'll keep coming, but I also wanted to see if we wanted to pass around the talking stick. <laughs> um, so any volunteers, let me know. There's one thing, Brad. Uh, I think it's best if you could have a Slack room or, or a Discord server. Um, yeah, let's see. I've been using, in the working group, I've been using, um, what do you call it, Element Matrix uh, as a chat platform. That doesn't mean that we'd be tied to that. Um, if anyone's got a preferences, you know, maybe just, uh, yeah, chat room. Um, that's chat room. Add your preference here. Uh, so for me, I'm saying I kind of like matrix elements, but uh, yeah, add add whatever you like, um, and we can definitely do something like that. It is nice to have a chat room, I agree. Um, yeah, although, perhaps. yeah, sorry, since yeah. everyone has a Slack, I believe, I don't know. So probably Slack could be one of, one of the other option. Yeah, Slack is nice. I like it as a chat platform, mm -hmm. especially yeah. for. OK. Right, yeah. Um, so and Discord and Slack are not the same thing, right? I don't think so. Okay. I think Discord is slightly better for we can even have the meetings on Discord instead of Google Meet. So it's much better. Oh, yeah, I see. Um, do you know if Discord allows for recording meetings? Um, that was one feature that I liked Google Meets for, uh, although you have to have a special account. I, I happen to have one email address with uh, uh, enough privileges to record Google Meets, so I, that's why I chose this is all. Yeah, let me, let me check. OK, and then um, something else I wanted to bring up, and maybe we can talk about this at the end actually, is whether we want to, you know, what schedule we want to have these meetings on. Um, but maybe we should open up the floor for any other discussions we'd like to talk about here. Like, where do we want to take the roadmap? What needs love? What needs maintainers? Yeah. So, yeah, probably it's good me starting the describe what I, I what the robot web tools needs actually at the moment so so far for the recent years like the all the maintainers were on and off all the time and uh, so it was so I try so how I so okay uh, so how, how uh, probably it's good starting how I uh, describe how I have been maintaining the robot web tools so far and probably from that uh, perspective, you can think of how we can manage our WT in the longer period. So uh, how I did was actually like there were a lot of the pending pull requests and issues as you saw, and it's been stacking over years. And I've been singing, uh, honestly speaking, I've been ignoring like uh, questions and uh, issue raisings on about the library but I only cared about somebody actually fixing something or adding up features. And if I see the familiar GitHub ID a couple of more times, or actually Ming Gang and Wayne sent, and sent me an actual email to discuss about imp creating a new features. So from that time, I just tr I tried to uh, digging a little bit of GitHub uh, account to see how his background and uh, development background is. 
and if it was trustable and if the pull request was sufficient enough, then actually I gave, just gave it a maintain maintenance ship to allow to submit the pull request, accept the pull request. And they, if, and it's been rotating a whole time. And like, thanks to Ming Gang, actually he, he is the founder of the RCL node and he's been maintaining by himself. So I'm very thanks to him as well as Wayne, actually he start, started to contribute uh, last year, right? And so that's how I've been I'm maintaining. And one, the philosophy I was believing was uh, wherever it goes, it's better and it's better than doing nothing. So I just try, try to trust all the uh, contributors or pull requesters and just like accepting everything actually, if it is the actual implementation or improvements. And that's how I, although there was a little maintain and a few number of maintainers, that's how I've been maintaining or how the RWTP uh, robot web tool has been maintaining. And that's something I was struggling and and I, I believe the lack of maintenance can be solved through the, this working group is the, my main goal probably. So to bring up the discussion point, I would say, what would be the best practice to keep the maintenance online and active to while people are shifting due to the like the personal issues or anything is is the probably good start of discussion and second is uh oh yeah that let's i think that's the uh, question we may we can start yeah i think the the best way to go or uh, actually back then when we uh, were um, a bit more active than we are now was that someone would be able to assign let's say pull requests to uh, to other people who are maintainers right so right now we can or we already know more or less who is willing to be more active right and maybe someone would be able to assign these pull requests or these issues to people from within the working group Right, because uh, otherwise it's yeah it just slowly and gradually turn into notifications or unread emails that just stay there forever and mm -hmm. as you said it just keeps stacking yeah that makes sense um so maybe with that like an auto the auto assign code owners for uh pull requests might help um mm -hmm. that still means you need more reviewers and maybe this um this working group is a is a place to help onboard new reviewers. Um, like maybe that's one of the the bits of value that we get here. Yeah, I yeah I do believe so. And um, like every every working group that I've seen does things a little differently. I know in navigation they're frequently looking at at like issues and pull requests is a major focus of the working group that could be what we want to do here. I'd love to hear more opinions on on what we want to get out of out of this group. Like we're here, we showed up, we're interested in this project. Now what do we want to actually do uh, on a, you know, week to week, month to month basis with that? Um, I'm sure you all have different opinions. Um, yes, yeah, so, so for me it's like all about um, trying to bridge all all sort of modern developments in the JavaScript environment. So for example, with deep learning and computer vision, all of these things uh, can be capably done on the browser. And secondly, a lot of things uh, which are happening, one specific framework I, I can think of is web GPU. So you have OpenCL uh, compute, which could be done on the browser and WebGL as well. So, so my intention is to bridge modern happenings, which could be implemented directly on the robot on ROS or on the cloud. But if it's possible, if you can migrate some of those uh, frameworks or some of those features onto the browser, I think that will add great value. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm looking at. 
Definitely agree that those are important things. And I mean, I think that's why these tools exist is to, is to move that direction. Um, I guess I'm trying to figure out um, like how, how do we structure this as a working group as opposed to an interest group, right? Like it, it, it is valuable to come in and talk about the thing we're interested in. And maybe that's the only value we need out of it. Um, but I think that maybe the more value that can be gotten out of it is how do we structure structure this commonplace around getting work done and organizing that work um, is, is maybe where it can provide more value. Like, I think we can talk about the things that we're interested in on, on discourse, um, but I, this is also a good place for it. I'd love to have like presentations in here as part of the, the meetings if, if we can get any volunteers who wanna show us cool new tools. Um, so actually I'll write that down as a idea. Um, maybe we'll put out a, a call for interest for, for presenters. Um, for the next meeting. That's a, yeah, actually, that's a good idea. And I think oh. it would be good if we, if we come up with a short term roadmap uh, with whatever amount of contributors that we have. So if you have like a short term, road, a quarterly roadmap, let's say, uh, and then it'll be good to pick specific tasks and distribute amongst us. To me, it seems like those are two different kinds of meetings uh, possible. One is that uh, let's figure out the direction that you want to take this uh, this set of tools and build a roadmap, uh, kind of exploratory. Let's set a goal out there, and so we can trace towards it. And a different type of meetings, maybe on different days, is how do we break it down and trace and track the work to, to achieve that goal. So maybe that's just think about those lines. I think that makes sense, especially if we're thinking about a quarterly or even a, a Ross distro level roadmap, you have those meetings once every so often and in between it's, it's trying to break it down and track progress towards the goal and, uh, adapt to um, the roadmap that we inevitably don't hit everything in and seeing what's the top priorities from what we can still do. Um, it might be interesting to, I know that, you know, especially uh, farther out in the ecosystem, out of the core, we're not as tied to the uh, uh, exact release dates of the distros, but it's still probably interesting to think about, you know, what's the, what's the roadmap for um, ROS2 uh, hump, Humble Hawksville, like, uh, because I think that one's going to be a really, really big um, deal for us too. I would consider it probably the 1.0 point because you know first five year support release. I think there's been a lot of really good development going on since F Foxy after the Foxy release that maybe makes Ross two actually usable for a lot of folks that it wasn't before. Um, so. I'd be really interested in trying to figure out what are the most important things that we could get done that are missing for Ross 2. Um, I don't want to forget about the Ross 1 folks, of course. Uh, now that Noetic is out, it kind of seems like we're maybe not at a feature freeze, but you don't want to break any existing APIs. You don't have much of an opportunity to do that anymore for, for Ross 1. Um, so we could have a dedicated meeting for uh, setting up a, a H turtle and Ross one end of life roadmap um, just to try and set top priorities. Uh, I don't know if we want to get into that today. I think this is more brainstorming where we want to go. Um, and then we can execute on that in the following ones. But uh, I like that idea. There's my normal alarm just went off. <laughs> um, Okay, so set longer term direction uh, in between roadmap. Oh, just a question since I'm not kind of uh, familiar with, with tools. Is there any acute problems that need to be addressed or um, something, a high priority that's on everybody's mind that need to be talked about in terms of direction or particular feature or anything like that? I personally have been thinking about, um, I feel, and this may be uh, 
controversial uh, opinion. I feel like the the visualization tools for Ross and Ross Two, uh, uh, Arcuit and Arviz, are a little outdated and hard to extend. Uh, and I've been wishing that we could somehow throw the all of the progress that's gone on in web. GUI technology to these problems. Um, and something that I thought might make a lot of sense would be a native app using web GUIs. So I was interested uh, in figuring out how to get RCL Node.js to run in an Electron application so that you could package and distribute a native app, um, but still use these, these technologies. So that's a, a pet interest of mine. I don't know if it's acute or high priority, but it's um, definitely something I'm trying to think about is how do we, you know, maybe like get a full featured Arviz or Arcuit or combination of the both and you just get better GUI tools. Like, uh, I'm aware of a very similar project. Uh, in fact, they've used uh, another open source uh, that visualize. I think it's a web this for autonomous cars. And I think they've, they're using Electron to build desktop native solution. So I think this is the link. But this is really tied to WebWiz and autonomous vehicle vertical. So I think there's like definitely a scope there if we can streamline or even customize widgets based on this on Hey Emerson, if I may add uh, regarding say using something like Electron to uh, basically connect to say a ROS network. Uh, that is definitely something that Ming Yang and I have been talking about on the RCL Node.js, just some kind of demo, uh, just so people can get started and kind of bootstrap them and bring them up to speed very quickly. And then, then you know, and then once you basically seal, once you have something, you know, kind of up and running, you can take and extend it forever to your own uh, vision. And so that's definitely something that uh, neither of neither Ming Yang or myself have a lot of experience in that side of things. We've been working mostly in the Node backend side of it uh, for a couple of years. So definitely any contributions to the project there. And it may not even be part of uh, something that we do uh, directly on the RTL Node.js, but just some other uh, you know, repo that some other some other guys that are more familiar with some of the front end technology could contribute to would be awesome. Uh, but that does bring up the question in my mind is in terms of the split between back end, front end, uh, you know, because I've just been working on the back end side of things. And so I think maybe a discussion we could kind of start to bring all our interests. Uh, again, I know this, we want to work towards, uh, uh, I guess, some kind of big vision that we could all kind of see how we fit in and how we can contribute to that vision is something that I'm looking for. Uh, uh, again, the front end side of things, there's a, it's, it's just continually opening up more and more. Uh, the discussion about like web, uh, uh, was it uh, uh, GPU and just more and more technology using uh, web assembly and all, whether it's on the back end or front end continues to uh, mature. And I'd love to see us have a continuous uh, discussion and I think if we start to embrace more of these cooler newer technologies well it'll it'll be more attractive to lots of people coming in that have maybe a, a, a kind of a distance interest in robotics but they bring some really interesting skills in if you can kind of connect them uh, I think we could kind of multiply or scale up our uh, just the contributions and the visibility. Uh, again, be, anything you do that's visible, people are going to pull in on that versus talking back in, you know, technology. That's a smaller group. So I'd love to see us uh, start to talk in that direction. And again, Ming Yang, he has, uh, uh, he's, you know, he's been with us for a long time, and he has some some thoughts too. Uh, hopefully, he could get connected here and uh, share some of his thoughts. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Um, I feel like there's a, a wide developer world who might be interested in building applications around robotics. Um, you know, if, if you provide a useful interface that is is easy to call, then all of a sudden they can start building front ends for people to just more easily use their robots. Something that I've had as a pain point on past uh, robotics projects I've worked on is that you have all the developers uh, who are intimately familiar with the robot code base, uh, SSH into the robot, do their like ROS topic lists, maybe bring up an Arviz window because they have ROS in the development environment installed on their computer. And then you try to hand it over to the, the QA testers or the robot operator who needs to take it out in the field. And all of a sudden, they need a developer machine for that. Like They should be able to pull this up on an iPad or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I'm sure yeah, we that, all that's experience. me. You're describing my my problem. They started yeah. getting into this. Um, but I also wanted to mention that that li link um, Vishal posted about Foxglove. It looks like it's um, it's like a new company. Well, at least it's a product. It's open source product. But what I wonder if uh, if it makes sense to involve those uh folks into these discussions because i think they're either iterating on web tools or um it would be pity if if there were two efforts to bring visualization to the robotics world right um they're doing their own thing and web, web tools is doing their own thing um there must be some commonalities or reuse or contributions they're doing it open source as well so. Yeah, um, something uh, I'll add as an action item to reach out to Foxglove and maybe they'd be interested in presenting what they've got here and tell us all about it. I mean, I'm sure that's free marketing, you know. Um, yeah, definitely. And I'm taking a look at, I just opened up their, their GitHub organization. That is cool that it is, um, is, every, is their whole thing open source? And then the idea is what they provide the um, infrastructure to run it so that you don't have to host it yourself. Uh, I don't know what the plan yeah. is, but um, I've been able to download it. They're only supporting ROS one at the point uh, mm -hmm. at this moment, um, but I'm sure it will evolve to yeah. better support. It. Yeah, I'm just looking into their web page, and they they are actually a fork of a web is, which is and oh really proves yeah. So yeah, the Fox Glove is ba and developed based on the 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 ROS bridge. I, I believe Ross Bridge, I don't know, but probably Raw 3 DJS that uh, what is uses. Yeah, I think they, they have like a very custom graphics uh, framework for rendering all the topics. And I think the main use case is to deal with Ross bags as, a, as opposed to live data. Mm. So I know that was like, true for WebViz. I think they've started to add experimental Ross Bridge support, but it's mostly a bag playback uh, mechanism. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Wondering, like, as part of this group, do we deal deal with tooling and infrastructure as well, as opposed to providing standalone software? Um, can you give an example of what tooling and infrastructure you're thinking of? Um, let's say uh, a WebRTC interface, which anyone can host on cloud, like a, a Docker container, for example, uh, from which you can relay topics between robot or simulation to you know, content. I think what it comes down to is whether we have um, developers and maintainers who are willing to spend time on that. Um, there's a little bit of a consideration of like, it's nice to have a focused charter and make sure that the projects we put in here fit within that. But but beyond that, and I don't want to make the charter too narrow, it's just mostly like just meant to be a guiding guiding light for like, what, what should we be thinking about? Um, yeah, beyond that, it's like who wants to maintain it. <laughs> um, I'm just going to oh, yeah. chime in with a couple thoughts. Uh, this is about the first working group meeting I've ever been involved in. So first of all, you know, appreciate the leadership that you guys are showing, and uh, you know, it's a good learning experience for me personally. Um, I have played around with WebViz recently. It does look very similar to that Fox Club stuff, and it also does have pretty good support for live. Ross monitoring stuff in the plane that I did. So if you're you know, looking for something like that, it's a, it's a pretty cool tool. And you know, my position is from, is one of being a Ross robot developer that needs to get interfaces built for interacting with it for my clients to deal with a robot. So uh, I guess what I'm proposing is that you know, another branch of our charter perhaps is not only providing tools for web developers to interact with robot systems, but also providing tools for robot developers who are not necessarily web developers. I stumbled through a lot of JavaScript and uh, CSS stuff very painfully. Um, so, you know, my pain point is developing or making it easier to develop web tools uh, as a robotics person. Um, so maybe those two obviously meet in the middle, but it may be worth uh, recognizing both of those perspectives. 
Yeah, I agree with that. And I think I was trying to capture that um, in the charter. If you have any uh, uh, suggestions for like wording update there, I, I won't merge it right away. It was just a you know first draft at what I thought a charter should sound like. So um, I, I definitely want to capture like we want to make it easier for ROS developers to provide interfaces for folks who are not ROS developers to use their robots. Um, and if there's a prefab set of components that people can plug in and a template project to get started, all of a sudden that starts to make it a lot easier if you're not familiar with um, starting up a, a web-based project. Um, I definitely agree with what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it definitely seems like the kind of thing that ideally could be a sort of prosperous circle and cycle of you know, ROS developers building the interfaces for web developers and then the other way around. Uh, and we're all just... Uh, singing kumbaya in a circle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that's, I think, the nice thing about the Ross Bridge protocol is you've got a way to, uh, um, I, that's the nice thing about anonymous pub sub distributed systems is you can have specialists on either end building their portion of it, and um, you've got this common interface. And so with something like Ross Bridge, if we provide common web components, you can plug in the basic stuff and get it done out of the box, ideally. Um, otherwise, you've got all the messages you need, and, and someone with more advanced skills in that area can keep running with it. Um, so I think that's probably what's providing some of the largest value, probably, to um, to that particular goal, is uh, just common communications interfaces. It's an API. Uh, yeah. I got actually got a question regarding the the, the working uh, the people in the working group. Uh, what what are what are the repos you guys are actually looking into? I got interested in because uh, when I saw the, the 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 contributions, there are four different groups. One is, is who is contributing only ROS Bridge, and the other one is only contributing ROS LibJS and or ROS 3DJS. And um, on, another one is uh, RCL uh, ROS2, which is RCL node group. And the other are uh, Web Video Server as well as Web RTC ROS. So, I would, so within the working group, I was curious like who interested in, in which part or more familiar with the, which part. I'll speak for myself. I personally am very focused on on ROS2. Um, I'm trying to move that project forward. And so for me, looking at RCL Node.js, how we could plug that in to build more advanced interfaces to ROS2 is um, my personal uh, 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 mountain to climb. Do you, uh, ROS2, you mean uh, RCL Node.js only, or uh, ROS2 version of the ROS bridge as well? I think they're both promising and have their own unique use cases. So. Uh, both. Yeah, I haven't gotten too deep into it yet. I only have played around, around a little bit with trying to get um, RCL Node.js running in an electro, in an Electron app. And my um, the demo that I wanted to build, Wayne, you brought up uh, building a demo, and I'd love to try and get involved in that, um, is I wanted RQ Graph, a, a visualization of the ROS graph in a browser tool using some of these interactive graph libraries, because I'm often looking at all of these nodes and topics and thinking, man, I'd really like to figure out the namespaces a little better so this graph is easier to understand. And if you can highlight and drag things around in your graph, that makes it a little bit easier to think about it. So that's the tool that I'm, I'd am i like to exist. I see. So more like uh, robotic, uh, with a robotic background. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely I'm focusing on like, what are my needs as the robot developer? But I have in the past thought about, you know, how does a, an operator need to work? Um, so you've got your video streams, a couple of buttons for controls. Yeah, yeah for me, uh, I guess most of my contributions, if not all of them, were in the ROS bridge and they are basically ROS bridge server. And I only use the ROS libjs as a, yeah, as, a web developer, you know, so sort of an end user. And yeah, I, I would be glad to either continue, um, yeah, basically in the same directions, or maybe get more involved in the ROS libjs. Right? But yeah, I, I had to diverge a little from ROS at some point, and now I'm coming back. So hopefully it's better. Mm -hmm.
I've been playing with uh, Rosbridge now for a few weeks now. And one major concern I have is from security standpoint, if I'm exposing, uh, exposing all the topics to the user, let's say a browser, uh, it can basically see any topic and publish to any topic. And um, that could be concerning if some, some of your actions or services uh, should not be exposed to, to, to every user in, in that network or, or even on, on the web. Your client could be like uh, <clears throat> in our country or whatever. And maybe you have any ideas or experience working with authentication, authorization, and with bridging the, uh, that gap between ROS and like authenticated clients in, in, in the web. Any thoughts would be appreciated. Well, I can I can add some comments regarding that. So there are ROS off, which is which is a lot uh, using the ROS. Uh, authentication in ROS level. And there is a globe in ROS bridge co uh, launch configuration, which actually defines, uh, you can define the topics that you want to expose to the uh, uh, to the client. So that's something you might want to take a look to if you consider all the ROS topics get exposed to the clients. Mm -hmm. But let's say, let's say I would wish to control my robot from web interface but uh, web interface is accessible like for two two groups of users one is like manager and one is user and uh, user is not allowed to control the robot but manager is so uh, in that case i i, <coughs> I can disallow to publish to that topic but uh, but manager who sh should be allowed to control the robot is, is not able to control it too. So like <clears throat> would be nice to have uh, some kind of authentication. Maybe uh, it could be, it could be external, like user could control the authentication process and send some uh, token, token to the web bridge and and maybe authenticate that in that case, uh, in such a way, but, but yeah. Yeah, I think that touches on the ideas of authentication and authorization. So having different permission levels for different users uh, once you've authenticated them. Um, definitely a cool thing to think about. It, it's really common within web apps to, to be thinking about, you know, what level of permissions do these users have? Um, maybe that's something we can think about uh, on the, I guess you would need to do that on the server side of the ROS bridge. Um, something that I also thought of, if you're if you're looking at ROS two at all, is um, there's the SROS project, which is trying to use DDS security features to um, secure ROS systems uh, strongly. I'm not super familiar with how it works, but there is a security working group. I think it's been going a little bit slowly these days, but it's there. Um, they're still working on it, and potentially you could set up the security levels. And this wouldn't help with the um, authorization for different users because it would be a, a general security policy assigned to the server node. Um, yeah, so you can control authentication for server node, but uh, yeah. not authorization of the user. Yeah, but uh, that's also an interesting thing to, to take a look at is, is this is sort of the DDS level security. So you could um, limit the abilities of, of the server node itself um, so it's not even like in the bridge to the web. It's that that node doesn't even have access to to more than the topics you allow it to. Um, so potentially, do you have any? Do you have yeah. any ideas? How would you go about implementing it? No, maybe maybe that's that's something we can discuss later if with it with the roadmap. Maybe we, we shall focus on the the general idea today, and we shall we maybe we can discuss regarding the security issue later. Yeah. Yeah. So anyone else can uh, share the uh, interest or? Well, the, the one project that I sort of introduced me to Robot Web Tools and I got to work with it on uh, was a, 
project where we needed to show the 3D model of the robot environment uh, over a web browser. So that was obviously leveraging Ross 3D JS uh, and some of the um, just lower level Ross node JS stuff. Um, so kind of those fundamental uh, like front end exposures. So, so you, uh, your interest was visual uh, creating a three D visualization of your uh, from the uh, of your robot, basically. Yes. Yeah, basically trying to show a, a boiled down Arviz window. That was sort of what we were asked to do: is like make Arviz, but in a web browser. Mm -hmm. well, not exactly, but we can at least show you a pretty 3D picture. So yeah, and we do cool. have now like WebViz and Foxglove, which are open source. And so maybe part of the idea would be provide some tools that those can consume and then work on integrating them uh, or replicate. Yeah, somehow making some of the components a little more generic so they can be reused across more um, front ends, maybe. Yeah, it yeah. seems like something that we should maybe be somewhat cautious about is some of these sort of parallel and maybe slightly divergent efforts um, with WebViz and Foxglove and robot web tools. Um, I, I don't know what the answer to that is. I don't know if it's even really a question or a problem, but it's just an observation. So uh, I, I have a quick question. So does Ross in general have any overlap with Gazebo and its ecosystem? Because they uh, with visualization. So they're both owned by, or they're both run by Open Robotics, the, the organization, which I don't believe we have anyone from Open Robotics on the call. Otherwise, I would let them talk about it. But they are run as two completely separate projects. Um, and that, from my understanding, is, is historical. Um, they were both started at Willow Garage and were started by different groups of people as different projects. And some of the original founders of the Ross and the Gazebo projects back in, I don't know, 2010 or whatever, um, had differences of opinion about what they should be. And so they started on very different tracks and have stayed separate the entire time. Uh, you know, you've got the Gazebo Ross packages, which provide your bridge between, uh, and now there's the Ignition Ross bridge, uh, which is slightly different than the way the gazebo Ross bridge worked. But um, yeah, they, their roadmaps are separate. Their release schedules are separate. Their communicate, their pub sub frameworks are separate. Uh, so there's not a lot of overlap there. Um, I had a discussion at one point with some of the, the um, Ross and gazebo maintainers about you know potentially, would we want to use ignition rendering for Arviz instead of having Arviz have a custom rendering code? and they were very open to that idea. I think they like the way they've put together the new Ignition Tools project. Um, so potentially, if there's you know community and developer uh, contribution and pressure in that direction, they could start to converge a little bit, which I think would be good for the community. The, the fracturing is not, in my opinion, great. Personally, I feel one limitation with Arviz is it's purely a visual library. Uh, and with Gazebo, you have physics. And a lot of robotics project, it's, it's all towards RL and uh, simulations and so on. So I think physics is something which is missing in Ross web tools, even though we have JavaScript is perfectly capable of doing physics. So I think that that's like one area which we can think of, simulation in general. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point. I mean, I do get the arguments that are put forward for why Arviz and Gazebo are separate things. Um, you know, Arviz is the robot's understanding of the world. Uh, like, the Arviz is the, the the robot's eye view of what's going on, whereas Gazebo is the the world eye view of what's going on. So that's you know ground truth. That's reality. Whereas the robot may not understand reality perfectly, and that's that's meant to be represented in Arviz. Um, I think as you start to get more ed to more advanced use cases, you want your robot to have some, you know, maybe if you're working on something like manipulation, gripping, um, you do want to have a physics understanding in your robot, but I still don't know if it's Arviz that does that 
you might have you know sort of a mini simulator within your manipulation code that has a basic physics understanding to 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 plan things out but um, my counterpoint is that maybe maybe our viz is meant to just be a visualizer. Maybe adding simulation capabilities in there is not the point, and you use Gazebo if you want. But just my two cents. <laughs> yeah. But that's not to not meant to shut down conversation. I think it's it's a valuable topic of discussion. Yeah, I, I agree. So yeah, it's a it's all we we are open to all the all the ideas that we can think of from from this pers perspective. So for, so far, I, I see the interest from the from, from so most of the interest I can see is a uh, application level. I, let's say like Ben say you you wanted to have like a WVS, which was actually I tried to implement the um, the web version of the RVS like ten years ago, and uh, it's and due to the uh, to gen and uh, to general application was wasn't necessary to use it for as uh, uh, for that moment and so we tried and uh, for robot web tools actually we tried to keep it as a library and application that can uh, implement the public and uh, the company can implement the application level so yeah that's why the uh, we try to I we try. To create a WVs where 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 I was at Bosch and uh, uh, they dis decided not to and not to continue and just focus on the library that can be generally used for the everyone for the for to everyone not to lock some something to application level. So from that perspective, authentication and authorization is quite actually a good idea, I think, as a roadmap, and we can think of others as well. So is um, so that that project is that what it became Ross three D JS? Uh yes. So it the project has been, uh, was started with a PR to remote lab project mm -hmm. from Bosch, and with uh, Bosch and Brown they paired up with uh, by the PR to beta program. That was a, st a start of the raw. Uh... Okay. Bye Wayne. Thanks for coming. Bye Wayne. Thanks for coming. Yeah, that was a start of a start of the 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 robot web interaction project, and after that, 2013, Willow Garrett, there, uh, Willow Garrett, Bosch, uh, Willow Garrett, uh, joined the team and tried to make it as actual actual library called Robot Web Tools, and yeah, that's how the Raspberry protocol has implemented. And based on that, we implemented the raw slip JS as, as well as raw 3D JS. Great. Okay, yeah, I think we're we're at about the hour here, and so I want to make sure we get to this before um, we run over. I don't want to mess with anyone's schedule. Um, how often do we want to run these meetings? I think that we've had a really good conversation here. I think we might need to just kind of work continue working through it a little bit. But um, I think what we probably want to do is just schedule another general meeting as the next one before we do anything really specific. Um, it seems like we have enough interest in topics of conversation. <laughs> so um, do we want to do this every two weeks uh, or once a month? Or uh, what are we feeling? Uh, two weeks is good. Okay, pretty standard. Yeah, so I will schedule the follow-up, the next meeting, for uh, two weeks from now at the same time. Does that work? Uh, I think this was, I picked this one to fit with the most of the doodle uh, responders as I could um, while I was prioritizing Jihoon picking one of the times that you, you chose because I wanted to make sure that you could make it. Um, Oh, actually, yeah. Can, can we create another doodle with that? Because like I messed up with the doodle, and <laughs> that actually uh, made me a schedule at Friday night, eleven p.m. Which oh, just not not awesome. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm happy to just put out another doodle to be to try and schedule the next one. Um, see what the preferences are. Um, is there a? Let's see. Yeah. If anyone has any suggestions up front, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just open up the same um, the same thing again. 
and we can go from there. And then I'll try to schedule it for two weeks from now. So I'll put that up right away. That way people have time to respond and get it scheduled for, um, let's see, what would that be? June 25th, I think. And what's going to be the focus of the working uh, the, the meeting then for the next time to so like so today was kind of like uh, gathering to see who who is working on and uh, uh, who is uh, the, to see the people around the robot web tools and probably it would be good to, to have objective for next yeah um, maybe trying to think of a high-level roadmap would be a good exercise there. Uh, so for me, I'm thinking about the ROS2H roadmap. Um, there's also ROS1 uh, considerations. So someone who's more focused on that will need to drive that discussion, I think, uh, and what timelines we want to think about there. I, I guess there are still noetic patch releases, and um, Melodic is still live. Those are the two. Um, does anyone remember when Melodic goes end of life? Uh, a kinetic just went to end of kinetic just went so melodic is maybe next year or something like that yeah okay. um, yeah so I mean that's still a consideration is is in there I mean anything for melodic I think is just stabilization bug fixes there's no new development that's gonna happen but I imagine you still have some room for new development for noetic because that's gonna be live for another five years or four years at this point I guess um, four and a half I don't remember so uh, yes, anyway, so I think that, yeah, high level roadmap is a good um, agenda lead for, for next meeting. Uh, focus, high level roadmap. Uh, and we can go from there. We'll do you know general housekeeping stuff, high level roadmap, think about where we want to store that information. Um, if we want to have a, a backlog repository or use the community repo as a high level project board, something like that. Um, we could also just make a GitHub projects board to, to organize issues cross repository that works within an organization. Um, so yeah, that's something we can think about next time. And beyond that, maybe we'll um, try to make a chat room uh, before the next meeting so that we have that available. And we'll also put out a call for presenters. Like maybe if we have a short presentation and a roadmap discussion, that'll take up the hour. Um, oh, I actually really like to invite the Matthias, who who is actually sub, uh, maintain, uh, helping maintenance of Ross JS as well as Ross 3 djs And uh, actually, I'm calling for help. Everyone is welcome to add a comment in the pull request or just help to come and uh, manage the uh, pull request and opening open pull request in any repos. So please help. <laughs> OK. Yeah, maybe we'll uh, uh, assign a personal action item to everyone. Maybe pick a PR and try to review it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for a high level roadmap is probably is the biggest thing we can think of to move forward, and as well as I really like to get something out from the meeting is the maintenance ship and like active maintenance ship. Okay, yeah, we can maybe make some. Um, it seems like we've identified uh, within the the. Sorry. Um, within the charter, I tried to identify how you group together those repositories a little bit into into sub projects, and maybe we can try to come up with a list of maintainers for those high level um, groupings, and that way you can assign teams. We can make teams in the organization, assign those users to then get auto assigned on rotation to repos within that sub project. Um, probably we don't want to auto assign a general reviewer group to everything in the organization. I've tried that before, and it just doesn't work out because not everybody cares or knows about everything in the in the org. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, I agree. That's I put that on the um, the list here for next meeting. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Anything else before we go? Otherwise. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming today. I think this is a really valuable discussion, and I'm looking forward to future ones. Yeah. Thank Bye. you.
thank you for coming and thank you for the meetings okay see ya bye right bye